Hey everybody, you are now tuned into the Blackout, shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture. Blacked out by the majority on Afro Vibes Radio, the number one online internet radio station with your girl, Tequila. Today's special guest is founder of the Garden City Music Festival and Musically Inclined, Miss Rain Eatman. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. How about yourself? Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on to my show. I know we've been in a talk about having this interview for like <laughs> probably over like the last year or so <laughs> and we finally secured it and we're here today so thank you so much for coming thank you for having so, me oh absolutely so before we get into it just tell us a little bit about who miss rain eatman is so miss rain eatman in the purest sense is a research bug i um have music background i have a uh, education background but a lot of what i feel defines me is my love of research and my love of just learning as much as I possibly can when I can and so um, on paper I have about maybe next year would make 20 years of piano playing experience uh, 10 years of teaching experience and I've had the opportunity to tour and do things of that nature but at the heart of it I really do have a heart of research and like community service so if you don't see me, you're not going to see me playing a piano anytime soon I'm sorry to my uh, professor Dr. Zadaru I am I'm not probably going to do that but you will see me doing more community outreach being active in the Acres Homes community um, being active in my church and things of that nature that I really have a heart for and for ministry and service so that really is it <laughs> oh, that's such a beautiful thing. And especially for you to be able to be um, classically trained in piano for over 20 years. That's something that you typically don't hear within the black community. So right. we love to share all those different right. elements and sides to us is, right. you know, the beautiful culture that we are. Absolutely. So what actually attracted you to music and why do you feel like performing arts is so essential to everyone's creativity? Well, music was actually always a part of my family. And as I got older, I discovered that it was a staple in and certain parts of my family on my mom and my dad's side of the family. But it was more so kind of plopped in my lap when I was four because they noticed when I was four years old, I would constantly just run to the piano and just try to bang on the keys and find something and play the songs I would hear from Barney and things of that nature. So eight years old, it was like, okay, that's it. No discussion. You're taking piano lessons. And I thank God for the woman that is Anita Louise Bell, because she fought with me for 16 years behind piano lessons. It, it was every Wednesday or Thursday, no fail. It was just fighting, falling out, crying, pretending to fall asleep, whatever I needed to do to make sure I didn't have lessons. She saw past that because she saw I had an innate desire for music mm -hmm. and I couldn't leave it alone. So it was because of her determination that I was in, I was actually introduced to the world of music as I see it on the classical and on the non-classical side. So. so how has music personally influenced your life? It has given me relief. Honestly, music is one of those things that I really find an escape in. And I am the type of person, yes, there is a cliche say, oh, yeah, I can listen to anything. But no, when you can switch between uh, August Burns Red to uh, Kiki Shepard to um, Luther Vandross and several others within one playlist, not even four songs apart from each other, then you can really say that you listen to oh, music, yeah. listen to everything. But music has always been that just escape for me. Like, no matter what I do, even if I'm just playing random chords, I, I love listening to it. And it literally transports my mentality to a whole nother state of being. So I just... And see, I definitely understand your love for music and wanting to use uh, music as a community service as well. Absolutely. Because I know for myself, um, I wasn't the most athletic person in the world, but uh, speech and debate and music were my two yes. areas. And so Absolutely. I did the cello with orchestra and Ooh. then uh, choir, soprano one. But nice. I love the cello because I remember the first time um, they took us to, I think, Elsick High School or something, mm -hmm. and they were trying to show us the different um, types of... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, orchestras mm -hmm. that they had in the district. In that particular school, they went from like Mozart to some whatever hip hop song was popular <laughs> at that time. And they intertwined all yep. of that into one yep. 
you know, one piece of music. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, so this is something, it doesn't just have to be a classical thing. It can really be whatever you identified it, whatever you vibe with in the moment, you can make that happen. Exactly. And then I found myself sometimes not even looking at sheets of music, just playing. And that's really, going with the flow. And that's really like the organic way of doing it. I love, I really wish I knew this uh, bassist's name, but he did a TED Talk. And the one thing I took away from his TED Talk was that the way music is taught and drilled into people's heads is not organic to how it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Through tradition, music was always taught through rote. Whatever you can mimic, that's how you play it. So, and from a young age, we're not taught to write our ABCs. When you're first learning, before you get into preschool, it's all verbal. It's all repeat after me. Do what I do. Say what I say. And music organically falls in that same pattern of learning. Mm -hmm. But so many people put a stigma on, oh, well, you have to be able to read music in order to be a real musician no 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 no. i could tell you right now my husband just learned how to read music maybe three years ago he's been self-taught for nine years he can play circles around me (laughs) and i will tell and it's not just because he's my husband but because he has an affinity and he learned the organic and natural way this man can play circles around me and piano is not even his main instrument it's guitar Hmm. so it's about how you Give yourself a well-rounded view of music. Yes, you should learn how to sight read, but don't discount yourself just because you don't know how to sight read. If anything, you have more access because you're allowing yourself to learn organically rather than just in a rigid manner. Absolutely. And so one of the amazing things is, as you stated, you went on from the classical music, but you still continue to focus on music to the point that you're an entrepreneur and you own Musically Inclined. Yes, ma'am. Tell us about your business, and then we're going to go into how that flew into the Garden <laughs> City Music Festival. So Musically Inclined is a company that is really about access. Um, one of the things that really motivated me to make Musically Inclined was the fact that my mother was not in the spot necessary to get all of the resources I had within her neighborhood. Her and my grandfather and my grandmother and my entire family basically had to do gymnastic tricks just to get me from Acres Homes to the south side, to downtown. And it wasn't just piano. It was theater. It was art classes, it was choir trips, it was this, that, and the third, and everything that we needed to get me access to was always without our reach and without our comfort zone. And so Musically Inclined was built with the idea to make sure that that access was within the community. And so our whole premise is to provide piano lessons. We do contracts with early childhood centers for extracurricular activities like Glee Club, musical theater, group piano lessons if we can get the grant to get them the pianos and actually let them keep the pianos and it's all about just making sure we remove that excuse of oh well it's too far away no it is here and literally the first because musically inclined is actually coming up on its fifth year next year and so the first two years it was literally about whoever wants it can have it and I remember I think it was our second year, I went from Tomball to Sugarland in a day for two separate piano lessons. And it's not about making sure, oh, well, I got to make sure I get paid or I got to make sure that my car is taken care of. I got to make sure that I'm getting the money necessary. No, the mission statement is about providing access. If it's something that somebody truly desires, the access and the opportunity to take it is there. And that's really what drives Musically Inclined, and that's what really drives the GCMF as it stands. So, That's amazing. So with your entrepreneurship, you decided that you wanted to found a festival that really catered to indie artists, mm-hmm. people that you typically wouldn't see on mainstream, which I think is excellent because, like we noticed with Chance the Rapper, he did indie music all the way up until he practically won a Grammy, mm-hmm. not being signed as an artist exactly. with anyone. So it, it is possible to mm-hmm. accomplish that goal nowadays, especially with the streaming services services that we have so tell us a little bit about how you decided to create the garden city music festival and the mission and goal that surrounds it well the garden city music festival was really a mandate and i i tried to hold my little spiritual side because i know a lot of people have told me rain you can't be talking about god and stuff like that online but i I have no choice but um i was really in a position after i graduated that i had all of this knowledge and no desire to perform i i'm sorry i am that person that unequivocally denies performing any chance I get. I am I'm over it. 
<laughs> but I was really kind of challenged by God because he said, you have all of this knowledge already in you. You have all of this skill inside of you and you're just sitting on it. Either I need you to make an album or I need you to do something with it, figure it out. And so the Garden City Music Festival came out of my desire to help some of my friends and some of the people who are in the city of Houston who have been fighting to the nail just to get some type of path carved out for them to get their life as a musician started. And a lot of people, they look to Chance to Rapper as the model, but the model, there is no model anymore. Mm -hmm. The way the music industry is set up, once streaming became the main source of consumption for music, the idea of success was no longer singular. It was very flexible and malleable depending on how you defined it because you can be a streaming success but you won't make no money <laughs> you can make more money off of being tours but you probably won't have too many people playing your streams on uh spotify you can be like the top charting artist on billboard but nobody will know your name there's a lot of different ways to be successful in the industry and so the gcmf has kind of put itself as at least the starting point. So you know the basics and not have to get a music business degree. You can come through us and get the bare minimum that you need to know how to have your operating procedures in place and then carve your path from there. Yeah. So. And I think that's what I love the most about Garden City Music Festival is the fact that you've incorporated these programs to teach them how to maneuver within the music industry. Mm -hmm. So they'll know how to stream their music. Mm -hmm. They'll know how to reach out to certain individuals in mm -hmm. a professional manner. They'll know how to perform. I'm sure you touch on all those different aspects. Tell us a little bit about how you help prepare these indie artists when they go out on their own. So one of the ways that I'm really proud of that we nailed was that we actually do uh, five free webinars. And in those webinars, we teach them a little bit about how to brand themselves as a musician. Um, one class is uh, strictly going over copyright law, licensing, and understanding royalties and where you can pull those royalties from. We were blessed to have um, Shakitha Davis from S. Davis Law Group actually teach that class. And then we were blessed even more by having Derek Dixon from Rec Shop Nation actually host another class about comparing apples to oranges about indie musicians versus uh, signed musicians. And then lastly, what we really do is just give them an idea of how to fund themselves because the game has changed. You're not really doing traditional methods of funding. Crowd funding has become one of the main source for independent yeah. musicians so we teach them how to figure out which source is better for them which sources they need to stay away from there are grants out there for musicians now majority of them are for classically trained and jazz musicians but there are some that fall outside of that genre of music and so we give them Links to I've done research to find some links that aren't just specific to jazz musicians and classical musicians to say, hey, if you need a grant, you can go through this program and get some funding through there. If you want to make money, you can use this crowdfunding source. If you want to get this type of clout, you can do this, so on and so forth. It's just really just doing the research for, research for them so that way they can just take it and run with it. And then we provided them with a workbook to where they can actually track. Now, it's incomplete as of now, but they're going to get the second half once the festival is over. And what it does, it gives them an idea of tracking their growth progress on their social media feeds, giving them ideas and definitions on how to better prepare themselves in marketing and then taking it to the next level from there. Absolutely. And so tell us a little bit about what everyone can expect from the festival when they come out and as far as sponsors and vendors. So what you can expect is, uh, well, you can expect four main genres to be present. You can expect urban, which actually encompasses dancing. It encompasses hip-hop it also encompasses spoken word we actually have a uh, yours truly being our poet for that day you can expect jazz musicians like Sabri Anderson and the Lone Star College's uh, jazz band coming down to perform. You can expect uh, gospel. We have Danny Williams with Rodney J and Refresh Live coming to perform. And then you can expect uh, the classical aspect where we actually have Miss Lanisha Hale, who is a graduate of U of H with uh, playing the clarinet. And it's a ton of others. I think we have at this point, well over 20 musicians <laughs> playing. So it's an all-day event from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
Um, there will be food. Uh, we have Aja Sweet Treats uh, providing uh, refreshments, TNT Barbecue uh, providing I mean, it's almost better than Burns. I'm just going to say that. I'm biased. I know I am. But it, I, it, they, they are the bomb, which is why they TNT. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> most deaf. Most deaf. And it's just it's so much that's going to be there. But what is important that I want everybody to come is come prepared to support the musicians. Because they will be having their own mer- uh, vendor tables there. And the way it works is that whatever money they make that day is completely theirs to take away with. We get no portion of that whatsoever so please come prepared to support all right so one more time before you get out of here tell us the location the time and any links or social media so they can learn more information yes ma'am so the garden city music festival is happening september 21st from 10 a.m to 5 p.m at the acres home multi-service center which is 6719 west montgomery road houston texas 77091 if you want any information about the gcmf or follow our countdowns you can follow us at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all at GCMF 2019. You can also get more in-depth information at www.GardenCityMusicFest.com to get a better in-depth look at the musicians and their bios. Or you can email me directly at GardenCityMusicFest at gmail.com for more info. Amazing. Well, you guys heard it here first. It's a great resource and opportunity for indie artists to really be able to grow in Houston. So make sure you check out the Garden City Music Festival happening on September 21st at the Acres Home Multi-Service Center. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming on our show. We highlight your black excellence and all the amazing things that you're doing in the community. And we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we return, Carla Lane will be in the studio to discuss her annual Champagne and Stilettos event. We will continue our show. But in Until then, you are listening to The Blackout, always shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture on Afro Vibes Radio with your girl, Tequila. Hey, everybody. You are now tuned into The Blackout, shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture. Blacked out by the majority on Afro Vibes Radio, the number one online internet radio station with your girl, Tequila. Today's special guest is the founder of This Woman's Work and Lane Staffing, the beautiful Miss Carla Lane. Thank Thank you so much for coming back today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to see you. Absolutely. Looking all fly, y'all. She up in here with her Gucci. (laughs) (laughs) Let me stop. So tell us what you've been up to since the last time you came to the station. I have been working hard, loving hard on these girls, and um, I've started my road to 50 that I'm chronicling online. So I had a birthday this past weekend, um, and so chronicling that and sprinkling what I call girlfriend glitter, which is the magic of when women get together and how special and sparkly we emerge. So lots of things happening, and then, of course, we're getting ready for for stilettos and champagne, which is my favorite time of year. We're doing it a little early this year, September 28th, but we're raising money for scholarships, so... Great stuff happening. Absolutely. So I know last year when I went, it was beautiful. I know you had it downtown at the library. What can we expect to be different compared to last year? So this year, we're at the Hobby Center, so we're going to have more room. Um, So that's one great thing that we're doing. And then instead of doing a fashion show like we did last year, we are having shoe cam. And so we want everybody to come in their beautiful shoes, whether they are heels or flats or tennis shoes, whatever it is that you love and like come in them we're going to have celebrity judges who are looking at the shoes and those that want to participate can walk the catwalk in their shoes and we're going to give out a couple of awards to the shoenistas that really really dazzle us and then of course we're doing the iron woman awards and honoring people in our community that are doing outstanding things to um, help improve the lives of girls and women here in houston so for those who don't know tell them why you chose to go with the theme of still Stilettos and champagne. So stilettos and champagne really are two of my favorite things. Um, Stilettos help us to stand a little taller. Mm -hmm. And, of course, champagne is bubbly. 
and it's happy and it's a celebration. So what better way to celebrate womanhood and empowerment and the whole concept of iron sharpening iron. We call our, our mentors iron women because when we get together, we all emerge sharper. So it's, it's those things. It's just mm-hmm. It's me. (laughs) So why did you choose to focus on scholarships for this year? So um, we had six amazing young women who graduated high school in May. And these are the first babies who have been in our program since they were freshmen. And so we have loved on these children for four years. We have seen the evolution of these children, the, the changes in their families, their plans. And so all six of our girls are at four year universities. Um, we, of course, I mean, and they are first generation. I get chills when I say it. First generation college students. We threw them an amazing graduation party and invited their their sisters. That's what we call our mentees, stepping into strength. Our sisters were there. Their um, families were there, and we just celebrated them. And it was amazing to see these mothers who at first were like, "Why? Well, I don't know if I want my kid." Y'all putting ideas in their head, but the pride associated with these babies are going to school. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that, um, you know, we not only can give them scholarships when they graduate, we want to walk them through the four years because we know a lot of people go to college, but not a lot of people graduate. Yeah. We want our babies to graduate and we want to be a part of their lives and their journey on earth, not through high school. So that's why um, this is so special to me is that I want to walk with these girls and I believe our community will help us do that because that's how we change our communities. We educate girls. That's, that's, that's something magical about a woman that can take care of herself. Absolutely. So what have you noticed from the six ladies since they were freshmen to coming oh to be in their senior gosh. year? Oh, my gosh. Um, so if you like this woman's work, the page on Facebook, you'll get to see these amazing stories about these girls. Um, and we highlighted in the invitation to Stilettos three of our amazing seniors who shared stories about how this program has impacted their lives. So we had um, one little girl who, candidly when she first became a part of the program I was not sure she was a good fit because she um just seemed like she was mad all of the time (laughs) but when I tell you she is involved she's evolved into a beautiful young woman she was failing when we met her she graduated top five percent of her class um She's at the University of Houston, too. I'm a U of H grad, so they tend to like U of H a bit. (laughs) But she's at the University of Houston. Um, She is studying nursing. Um, She's just done amazing, amazing things. But she started off, and she was just mad, and she said that, you know, there were times that she seriously considered suicide. And that's something that we didn't know. But she said she knew that if she could get to the second Saturday, it would be okay, and there would be people there that loved her. And, I mean, I didn't know until I saw the video because of course I'm not a part of the recording but I was just I didn't even know we were doing that kind of work and I guess that's why I'm so much more passionate about it. I've always loved this work and knew it was important and magical but to hear that story another young lady shared about how she never told anybody she had been molested but um, we had a, a, a meeting about sex trafficking that evolved into people disclosing that they had been sexually assaulted. And she sat in the meeting that day, and she's not one of the girls that disclosed. She's not one of the girls that cried. But when we asked her to do a video, she shared that that was the first time she'd ever heard that it wasn't her fault. Mm, wow. And I was, I was, I was just... We just don't know. We have intention of doing good, but um, I really think when your heart is in it, you do great. Yeah. 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 So it's just magical work. We need to send these babies to school. I need the community to help me well, do see, it. Well, see, that's why we have you here, because <laughs> we like to highlight black excellence. And you, especially, I always go on the internet, and I swear I'll be seeing you up and down my timeline, <laughs> even on her birthday. Like, she would just turn that in a good way, in a good way. But I always see you out doing stuff, or if I'm even at another event, I hear people discussing the things that you do. So I think it's so beautiful, the fact that you impact young girls at such an early age, because a lot of times people, they just 
assume, oh, well, they're teenagers, they got it, they can handle it. But a lot of times, those are the early years of their life where mm-hmm. they need that, mm-hmm. not just mentorship, but they need a woman in their life to really right. show them the positive outcomes that can be. Right. So a part of that, I heard you earlier saying that your daughter, you know, she attends Prairie View. Mm-hmm. How does she feel seeing you help other young ladies her age just be able to have those same opportunities? She, I, You know, it's so funny. I always tell her that I want to make her proud. And when I started this journey of entrepreneurship, I really, um, I'm an accountant by trade. Now, I like to talk, but I like to interact one-on-one. So the being in front of people terrified me. My voice would shake. I um, just hated it. But then I decided I was going to pretend that I was who I want her to grow up to be. And so I always tell her, you know, your mama just wants you to be proud of her. And she's like, how could I be any more proud? You know, how could I have a better a better role model? And then she comes to the sessions, too. She is in college, about to graduate in a year, and she will come to Second Saturdays because she wants to be around the girls. And, of course, she thinks that she knows everything about college now, so she got to tell everybody everything. But she understands the power of mentorship, and it's been amazing because in that process, she has mentors. So, you know, that when she was in high school, sometimes I would be looking for her, and she's gone to one of the mentors' office, and it's pretty amazing. Amazing that a program that I thought was for someone else really has benefited my daughter too and showed her, you know, really good female relationships, how to be friends, how to, you know, things that you don't want to ask your mother. It's not just um, children that come from, you know, sometimes difficult backgrounds that need mentors. I have mentors. We all need mentors. People that when you can't see, um, they show you. You know, that's that's really what it's about. And so watching her evolve and grow has been the joy of my life. And I know people, I talk about my baby forever because she is such an amazing young woman. Well, I know she is. <laughs> if she came from Carla Lane, we know she amazing. So tell us a little bit about this woman's work, um, how it's grown since the last year when you came on the show and you told us about some of the different mentorships and the programs that you have. Right. We have evolved into uh, the newest program is um, the Sewing Circle, which is the reason why last year we um, had the event at the library. So the Sewing Circle has evolved into a monthly book club. Mm-hmm. And so we get women together. And it's so amazing because of technology. We will come together um, to discuss a book. And I think that happens the third Tuesday of the month. And we don't know who's going to be in the room because of social media. There are women who don't even know us or anyone in the circle that show up because they love to read, which I love because that's what real community is about. I don't have to, we don't have to be cousins for us to read this book and for you to tell me great things about it and for me to tell you how I see it and for us to discuss it. That's what the sewing circle is. And it really is a play on the sewing circles of old when our grandmothers and our aunts would all sit together and it looks like they're sewing or it looks like they're, they're peeling purple hole peas or something and they're talking about life. That's what it is. So sometimes we meet and we talk about the book a little bit, but without, without fail it's somebody that's got something going on and so all the women are getting together and we're just discussing it and loving on each other so that's been amazing Carla's Closet is dressing um, hundreds of women a year it's evolved um, Prom Dress Drive rolled around in March and we've hit the mark of giving away 3,500 dresses um, all over Houston, north and south, in Dallas. We sent some dresses to Louisiana. So things are growing and moving. We're impacting people. And know that we're doing all of this work um, with donations. And nobody gets paid from this woman's work. We don't have vendors. We don't have people on the payroll. It's a volunteer staff. So if someone is getting a check, it's coming from my for-profit business or it's coming from someone who's sponsoring that service. But when people give to this woman's work, the money is for the programming. It is not for anybody. And I think that's important to say because the first three years, the first two years, I funded it myself for the simple fact that I've given donations to nonprofits and then um, get on their boards and I see who's getting the money and it's not the programming. And that, that's that's unfortunate to me because I think that when you donate to something, you're donating to a cause. And so I want to make sure that everybody knows that this woman's work is doing this woman's work with Anything that you donate. Absolutely. So for those that are interested in either being a part of your programs or just want to come out and volunteer, how can they register? So they could go on Facebook. That's that's always current and there's always something happening. You'll know what we're doing on Facebook and it is This Woman's Work on Facebook. And you'll see the red logo with the 
little curly, swishy, cute thing, because that's what I like. And then, of course, you can go to thiswomanswork.biz. That's our website. Um, you want to follow us on social media, though, because really that's where a lot of the up-to-date stuff happens. And if you want to support Stilettos and Champagne, if you want to come and have a great time with us while I'm supporting women's empowerment and scholarships and the clothing closet and the sewing circle and the women's mentoring, because we also are mentoring adult women women as well. If you want to do all that, go to, come to the gala and have fun with us. And our, our, our mentees are going to be there. They're going to be dressed. They're going to have their makeup done. And you'll get to see them. And you'll get to hear their stories. And you'll get to see the work that is this woman's work. Because that's what it's about. It's a cool party. It's fun. Come kick it with us. But it is about the work and us changing the lives of these girls. Now, you're a busy woman. You got the this woman's work. You got Lane staffing. You have your annual event that comes up. Mm -hmm. How does all of this help make Carla Lane a better woman? You know, this is this is like one of the first rules of entrepreneurship is to solve a problem. And so um, I wrote an article a while back and I said, you know, the great thing about my life is that I'm a problem solver because I got lots of problems. Come on, solutionist. <laughs> <laughs> so I build what I need or I wish I had when I needed it. Mm -hmm. And so this is um, this is really my life's work. This is what makes me happy. I can do it all day, every day. And the reward is, yeah, there, there's sometimes people take advantage, but every time time I get down there's somebody that shows up and it, it reaffirms this is the why and it's worth it what advice can you give a young lady or a young woman that wants to be a part of a program and the resources but they're just afraid to share their story just come you don't have to share until you're comfortable if you are a part of stepping into strength, and it is now open, it's not just at Madison High School, which is where we started. We have girls from, I believe, five or six different high schools, which I think is amazing because we got to teach girls how to be friends. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we what we have in common is that we're female. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Yeah. You can be my girlfriend. You can be my homegirl. Um, and just join in and participate. And you'll learn your discernment that we all have, that sometimes we have to develop. You know who's for you and who's not. Absolutely. And so just sit in the room and be open enough to give it a chance. Even if you got to yeah. come five, six times a year, just sit there. Because like I said, the young lady that I was like, I don't think it's a good fit. When I tell you, she is in college and she still comes second Saturdays and almost knocks me down trying to hug me. Well, you're doing an excellent job. I'm so glad you came back and just shared everything that you've grown and just improved with. Like I said, I love watching you on social media. I really, really, I ain't going to say hope because you don't need hope or a wish. <laughs> but I do hope that you just continue doing so well because I think as young black girls, nobody really teaches us how to get along with women that look like us. We always learn to be competition. Mm -hmm. And I think you put everybody in an environment where we can learn from each other. It don't always have to be who better than the next no. person. It's just shining a light on how well you did something so that the next person could do even better. That's what Lizzo so said. Lizzo that. said, if you shine, I'm going to shine. That's the song. <laughs> <laughs> Just blame it on I that I have juice. loved you today. You are the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We get to the end of our show. But before we get out of here, give them your social media so they give you a happy birthday wishes <laughs> on uh, Snapchat, Instagram, and all your wonderful entrepreneurial. So on Instagram, it is bossy. And yes, it is spelled like I said it because I'm from Dallas, B-A-W-S-E. <laughs> C. And then on Facebook, it is Carla K. Lane or um, Carlaism, which I'm a little smart aleck remarks so under Carlaism on Facebook. This woman's work is where you will find all the nonprofit work and you'll find all the information about stilettos and champagne, the amazing um, event that's coming up on September 28th at the Hobby Center. And you really want to get your tickets because we sell out every year and it is a ball. Um, and so, yeah, and follow me on my road to 50. It's 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 an interesting thing, and I'm telling it all. Everything I learn, I want to share so people don't have to bump into the walls I've bumped into. Absolutely. Well, thank you, as usual, for coming on my show and sharing your story today and just your resources for so many people to learn and just be a better person as well. And thank you all for tuning into The Blackout, where we always shine a light on black excellence, activism, and culture with your girl, Tequila, on Afro Vibes Radio. Make sure to check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at The Blackout ABR and to stay 
stay up to date on our previous discussions and future events, please visit Afro Vibes Facebook and Instagram at Afro Vibes Radio, Twitter at Afro Vibes Radio with an S, and lastly, listen to us online at www.afrovibesradio.com or simply download the Afro Vibes Radio app on the Apple or Google Play Store.